Hello, everyone. Today we are going to be talking about how we can, each of us can answer God's call by using our own special, unique talents and gifts. We're going to start with a reading from Samuel. Now, this story is um, about Samuel, who was one of the famous prophets of Israel. And some may say that this was not really a surprise, for it seemed as though God had plans for Samuel from the very beginning of his life, even before he was born. Um, Samuel's mother, Hannah, desperately wanted to have a child. She prayed um, really hard for a child, um, asking for a child and promising that she would give this child to God, that she would send him to live and serve in the temple. God heard her prayers and took pity on her, and she became pregnant. She had a son, and she named her son Samuel. True to her word, when Samuel was old enough, Hannah sent him to live at the temple. She would visit him and make him clothing, and God took care of her for the rest of their life. Um, the rest of their life. And this story comes from a time when Samuel was about... 12 to 14 years old. Now the boy Samuel was serving the Lord under Eli. The Lord's word was rare at that time and visions weren't widely known. One day Eli, whose eyes had grown so weak he was unable to see, was lying down in his room. God's lamp hadn't gone out yet, and Samuel, Samuel was lying down in the Lord's temple where God's chest was. The Lord called to Samuel. I'm here, he said. Samuel hurried to Eli and said, I'm here, you called me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go lie down. So he did. Again, the Lord called Samuel. So Samuel got up, went to Eli again and said, I'm here, you called me. I didn't call my son, Eli replied, go and lie down. Now Samuel didn't yet know the Lord and the Lord's words hadn't yet been revealed to him. A third time, the Lord called to Samuel. He got up, went to Eli and said, I'm here, you called me again. Then Eli realized that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So Eli said to Samuel, go and lie down. If he calls you, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down where he'd been. Then the Lord came and stood there calling just as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel said, speak, your servant is listening. The Lord said to Samuel, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of all who hear it tingle. On that day, I will bring to pass against Eli everything I said about his household, every last bit of it. I told him that I would punish his family forever because of the wrongdoing he knew about, how his sons were cursing God, but he wouldn't stop them. Because of that, I swore about Eli's household that his family's wrongdoing will never be reconciled by sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay there until the morning, then to open the doors of the Lord's house. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called to Samuel saying, Samuel, my son, I'm here, Samuel said. What did he say to you, Eli asked? Don't hide anything from me. May God deal harshly with you and worse still if you hide from me a single word from anything he said to you. So Samuel told him everything and he hid nothing from him. He is Lord, said Eli said, he will do as he pleases. So Samuel grew up and the Lord was with him, not allowing any of his words to fail. So that is the story of Samuel's call. Now, it was a very mysterious thing that happened to Samuel, right? What was it? The mysterious thing that happened to him was he was um, he was called by God. 
but why didn't he recognize who it was? Um, he had never heard the Lord before. So he didn't recognize that it was the Lord that was calling to Samuel. Um, and Samuel was chosen because he had a special gift that he could offer. And so he was chosen because of those special abilities. God recognizes and needs the special gift that all people have, including children and young people. Um, just because you're young doesn't mean that you don't have anything to offer. So we all have certain gifts and talents that we can offer the world, that we can offer our local community, our families and other people and ourselves. So there is a um, quote by Howard Thurmond that actually Joe had shared recently and I just loved and it when I, um, it reminded me, or Samuel's story reminded me of this quote. So I have it written down, so I will share my screen so you can see it. So the space out of the way. Don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Well, what is he saying here? He's saying the same thing, right? That, um, that we all have certain abilities and talents and it's imperative. So imperative means really important, a priority that we use our, our own talents. And these sounds are different for all of us. Um, and part of figuring out how to use those talents to figure out what those talents are, right? We all have certain strengths. We all have certain weaknesses. We're all good at things and bad at other things. Um, I'm reading a, the um, Kamala Harris's autobiography right now. So Kamala Harris is the vice president elect of the country. Well, soon in eight days, I don't know, a little over a week now, be the um, vice president of our country, which is very exciting because as I've been reading about some of the things that she's done, she's done wonderful things for other people. She's helped, um, she's helped people who were kicked out of their homes. She um, helped, um, she was critical, she's been done important things for social justice and she's just really done some um, pretty amazing things. And she did those. So when she was a kid, her mother used to say she'd come home and she said, oh, this awful thing happened today. And she'd be all upset about it. And she'd want, um, she'd want her mother to comfort her. And her mother would tell her, so what did you do about it? That was her response. Because we have the power to, to do things about bad things that happen. And so that instilled in her this belief that she was able to do things about things that about bad things. And her way of doing it, she used her own talents and abilities to, to do so. So what she did is she became a lawyer and of course eventually got into politics. And I'm so admire um, her for doing that in the ways in which she ways in which she did that and used her own skills to make a difference. Now for me, I wouldn't make a good lawyer. I'd make an even worse politician. I could never get into politics. So I think it's great what she's done, but I know that her ways aren't my ways because that's not genuine to me. There are certain things that I have skills with that I can do that can help um, my community and help other people and help the world, but it's nothing that would have nothing to do with being a lawyer or being in politics. So I want you guys to think about what is it, what are your strengths? What, what is true to you? Um, and in what ways could you use those things, those strengths, and what's true to you to help those around you? And Howard Thurman talks about it as being, um, being genuine. So it's being, I've talked about that in some of our lessons before, it's being true to yourself. And it's something I um, greatly believe in. Uh, get right rid of my screen here. 
um, because I have not always taken the um, path that everyone else does. Just because one person, some one path works for one person doesn't mean it works for others. And what Howard Thurman is saying in this quote is that if you follow your own path and you're true to yourself, you're better able to help people around you. So Howard Thurman was, um, he was a minister. He was born in 1899 and he died in 1981. So he was a minister, a theologian, he was a philosopher, he was a writer, he was an educator, and he was very much a leader in the civil rights movement. In fact, um, his, his theory, his theology of radical nonviolence influenced many people and shaped a whole generation of civil rights activists. And he was a key mentor to many civil rights, other civil rights leaders, um, including Martin Luther King Jr. So I'm going to read from you more from Howard Thurman. And this is along the same theme of what we've been talking about. Um, this I'm going to read from you. Um, it's called The Sound of the Genuine. And it's Howard Thur from Howard Thurman's um, commencement address to Spelman College in 1980. So a good um, uh, 40 years ago, I was four years old. Um, you guys weren't even born yet. And so this is called The Sound of the Genuine. The Sound of the Genuine. And I'm just going to read you some pieces of it. So this is words by Howard Thurman in a commencement address. There is something in every one of you that waits, listens for the sound of the genuine in yourself. And if you cannot hear it, you will never find whatever it is for which you are searching. And if you hear it, and but don't follow it, it was better that you had never been born. You are the only one you are the only you that has ever lived. Your idi idiom is the only idiom of its kind in all of existence. And if you cannot hear the sound of the genuine in you, you will all of your life spend your days on the ends of strings that somebody else pulled. There is in you something that waits and listens for the sound of the genuine in yourself. And sometimes there is so much traffic going on in your minds, so many different signals, so many impulses, that go back thousands of generations, long before you were even a thought in the mind of creation. And you are buffeted and swayed by these. In the midst of all this, all these signals, all of this, you have got to find out what your name is. Who are you? How does the sound of the genuine come through you? The sound of the genuine is flowing through you. Don't be deceived and thrown off by all the noises that are Part that are a part even of your dreams, your ambitions, so that you don't hear the sound of the genuine in you, because that is the only true guide you will ever have. And if you don't have that, you will not have a thing. Have a thing. So I'll repeat that. The sound of the genuine is flowing through through you. If you don't hear the sound of the genuine in oh. Be sure to hear the sound of the genuine in you, because that is the only true guide you will ever have. If you don't have that, you won't have a thing. So there's quite a bit more to that. Um, maybe I will share the link in the YouTube video and on Facebook in case it's a little bit. I know that it's it was written for um, for college students, so you may not have followed every bit of it. But hopefully you got the idea of it. And um, you can listen it again if you want to sort of get, get a better sense of it. And I said, I'll share the link to the, to the full commencement speech in case you're interested in checking more of it out. So until next week, be genuine, be true to yourself, be kind to yourself, and be kind to others.